Hey, 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 you guys. How are you? It is 2 o'clock on this beautiful Friday day. I'm going to give you guys just a minute to realize we are online. We are here and hope you guys can join me. It is beautiful today. Not sure about where you are, but here it is beautiful. Finally, <laughs> because we have still been having so much rain after those storms and the hurricane, you guys, that all of our lakes and ditches are still way too full. So it is nice to have a hot, sunny day, hopefully to dry some of that stuff out. Well, there is Sheena. Hello, Sheena. How are you? Oh, did you watch that? <laughs> Thank you. I think it's only been live now for about 15 minutes, so you were pretty fast on there. Hey, Daisy D, how are you? Hope you're doing well. Yeah, that was a fun one, that little Ipsy bag. So grateful to Nessa. What a nice little surprise that was. That was really fun, and I can't wait to try out some of those new products, especially that eyeliner. Been excited to try that for a long time. There is Jan34. How are you? I am doing great. Thank you. And Michelle, hello. There is another Michelle. Hello. <laughs> it is beautiful here too today. It really is. Actually can see some blue in the sky today. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can turn that camera around and show you guys. I'm not sure if I can remember how to do that on this live. Let's see. I think it's right there. Can you see out that window? Oh, uh, yeah. You can see that little patch of blue right up in there. And those are those big, pretty, fluffy white clouds that make everything so beautiful down here. All right, let's see what I missed here. The only thing I'm a little scared about the mascara, Sheena, is that it's not waterproof. And my eyelashes have a hard time standing up. <laughs> and if I don't have a waterproof mascara, they don't stand up at all. So I'm excited to try it. We'll see how it's going to do. But I don't have high hopes for it with my lashes, only because I have not found a non-waterproof mascara yet that actually works for me. So we'll just have to see. We will have to see. There is Dina. Hello, Dina. Wait a minute. I think we discovered we say that Dinah. Is that right? Can't remember if I'm saying that wrong. I hope you're enjoying your day too. And there is Francis. Hello, Miss Francis. How are you? There is Kathy. Oh no, you got some mold in your basement, Daisy? Well, I feel for you. Guess what? We found more mold in my office yesterday. <laughs> You guys know the struggle that we've had with that. Actually, let me let me catch you up to what we've done. I think you guys will remember over on the vlog channel. Speaking of that, we're back in Vlogtober. I didn't vlog yesterday because we had some special friends here in the house last night and um our little fella friend doesn't like to be on camera, so I wanted to respect that and not catch him accidentally in the filming. So we didn't do a vlog yesterday, but there should be one again this evening. I'm hoping. Yeah, I'm hoping. Hoping I can get that all in. I've already started recording for the day. It's just going to depend on how crazy busy I am to edit it. But nonetheless, I think you guys will remember on the vlogs where we had laid the plastic on the ground under the house. You guys remember that? And that was supposed to help with the mold issues coming up through the floor. We had several different people tell us that. Here's the problem. <laughs> that plastic prevented some of the moisture from seeping into the ground. And when the hubs went under the house about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago now, there were literally standing puddles of water under the house. Frogs had made their home like little ponds. <laughs> so... <laughs> so we called the air conditioner people out because you guys remember last summer we got a new AC unit and it's working wonderfully well. But the thing is, it's working so good that the differential between the coolness, you know, that, that comes right around the ducts underneath the house, because you got to remember we're in a mobile home, we're up off the ground. So all of our duct work is under the ground instead of up there in the ceiling. So anyway, whenever that cold air is flowing through all that vent system, it hits the air outside of the vent system, which is hot, especially here in Florida, and it causes condensation, and that condensation is just dripping under the house, and that plastic wasn't allowing it to just absorb into the ground. So... 
the air conditioner man said it's up to code. It's absolutely perfectly installed the way that it's supposed to be. The hubs called to make sure that it really was up to code and that the type of materials that they used were code materials and everything is. So it's just going to be that that plastic had to come back out. He had to pull that back out so that that condensation can, can get down into the ground. So, the only way to prevent it from coming up through the floor, I'm guessing, is whenever the new insulation and the vapor barrier goes back under the house, right above that duct work, if that makes sense to you. So, it's just a matter of getting the money to get it done. So, in the meantime, yeah, we've found more mold, too. So, Daisy, <laughs> I feel you, girlfriend. I feel you. I tell you what, we started having a few symptoms last week. And I told the kids, okay, we need to go on the hunt because there must be some mold creeping in somewhere. We've gotten to be such experts now on the symptoms when they start showing up. And sure enough, we did. We found some. But fortunately, it was just a little spot. And he was able to take care of that really well. So we're still waiting on the flooring and hoping that we get that done sooner than later. It has been a trial. So Daisy, hopefully yours isn't going to be as big of a bear to get out of there as ours was. But... I feel for you, girl. Oh, well, thank you, Jan. We had a fun time with that Dollar Tree haul. We really did. You guys know she hates to be on camera, but she did it with me, and she did a great job, and it, that one was a lot of fun. So we hope to do more of those in the future. I do have a heated eyelash curler, Sheena. I've got to put batteries in it and test it. I haven't even tested it yet because it's brand new. And so hopefully that is going to work for me. But you know what? No matter how good of a curl I get on my lashes, because my lashes tend to grow straight out, that even when they have a really good curl on there, if I don't set them with a waterproof mascara first or a good eyelash primer, the weight of the non-waterproof formulas pull them straight flat back down because the formulas are different and they're a little heavier so no matter what they're not gonna hold uh, the curl so but I, I can't wait to try that I thought it was right there where I could show you guys it's not right there uh, but I can't wait to put batteries in it and I want to do that on camera so we can see if it's really gonna work I got it from holler so hopefully it's gonna be hopefully it's gonna be worth it Dina okay well then you spell you say you say your name like I do cool <laughs> There is Amy. Hello, Amy. How are you? And Crystal is here from Oklahoma. Hello, Crystal. No, I have I have tried the Lord. Let's see, which one is it that has the telescopic? Is that L'Oreal? I think so. And I love that one. I absolutely do love that one. And I believe it is L'Oreal that has the really good primer. I don't have any right now, but I need to get some of that because... That stuff is fantastic for helping to hold the curl, for sure. Let's see here. Oh, Ninju is here. Hello, Ninju. How are you? Oh, well, thank you, Dina. She is a beautiful young lady. Thank you so much. And she is beautiful on the inside, which makes all that gorgeousness outside even prettier. <laughs> hey, Nessa. Nessa, how are you? I just posted the opening of the glam bag. Did you see it yet? Yes, I just got that up. I love it. And so thank you for so much. Oh, yeah, you did see it. There you go right there. You saw it. Yeah. And do you have a code? I sent you an email. If you have a code, definitely send that on my email so I can link everybody up to you. I appreciate it so very much. Peggy is here. Peggy, we are doing very well. They finally came and got most of the debris out of our yard from all the trees that came down. Just a little bit left. They're making their rounds and they get those trucks filled up every day. So not sure when they'll come back to finish that. But last little bit of cleanup there. Although, y'all, they have totally demolished the yard with those big big wheels they've got but not complaining because that is a, the least amount of damage to what it could have been so just grateful that we made it through the way we did i know dina right i would give anything to have nice long curled lashes <laughs> didn't get them just didn't get them so i have to fake them well, thank you, Daisy, and I hope yours I hope yours is an easy fix too. Oh my goodness. There is Lily also from Oklahoma. That's two of you from Oklahoma. No, Sheena, I haven't done a two well, 
I haven't done an actual brow tutorial, but in a couple get readies with me, I, sh I showed you guys how I did the brows. Um, but I am going to do an actual tutorial because I have a lot of people asking about that now. I'll show you the products that I use, though. Let's see if I can reach it out of this drawer. One of my favorite ones, if I'm in a real big hurry, I don't have this on today, but if I'm in a hurry, I like to use the Brow Wiz from Anastasia. It's actually a cream pencil. This is what it looks like on the inside, and it's one of the, uh, well, it's got the spoolie on the one end, and then it's got the pencil on the other. It's self-sharpening, so you can put it up like that, but it's so thin and so precise, and that cream, instead of the, the harsh colors that come in a sharpening pencil you know what i'm talking about it just glides on so easily and makes it so quick and easy so if i'm in a hurry not going anywhere super fancy then this is what i'll use but i'll show you what i'll use if i'm going somewhere where i want my brows to be just a little better and last well this i take that back this one lasts it just looks maybe a little harsher than what i'm about to show you see if i can dig it out here this right here, the Build a Brow from It Cosmetics. Oh, it's got a glare on it, doesn't it? Let me take it out of the box. I love this. Love, love, love it. It is actually a gel, but this Build a Brow has something infused in it that's actually supposed to promote hair growth as well for the brows. There's some kind of vitamins mixed in there. And of course, I love to use it with the It brush there let's see if it's called uh oh the build a brow brush the build a brow brush that's what it's called so it's angled on one end it has the spoolie on the other but it is just the perfect let's see if oh look there still got that swatch for, swatch from that glam bag but can you tell how the bristles are kind of separated a little bit to try to keep it from looking quite so harsh. Yeah, so that's what I like to, in most of the videos, this is the product that you see. It is the Build-A-Brow, or the It Cosmetics. Is it Build-A-Brow? Yeah, the Build-A-Brow from It Cosmetics. That's what you guys see in most videos. Today though, today I just did it with a regular angled brush and I used my little Urban Decay Naked Basics palette and I combined these two colors here. <laughs> so if I'm in an extreme hurry, like I got 15 minutes to do my makeup or less, then I just go with this because it's so much easier just to pop that shadow on there. So I actually do it in several different ways. Same kind of technique and design, but yeah, I will do a tutorial very soon, maybe next week. I've got so many videos lined up already. Not sure that I can get it next week, but I'll try and uh, show you guys how I'm doing it. But if not, I'm trying to remember which get ready it was there's a get ready with me on there that i've done recently that shows you how i do the brows so you may want to go to the get ready with me playlist and just take a look at the last couple and see if that might help you a little bit there but a lot of people seem to like the new shape baby girl talked me into it all of this right in here is no hair <laughs> there's hair here and there's hair right in here but you guys will remember from old videos that over plucking for all those i'll tell you i'll tell you who i used to shape my eyebrows after is elizabeth taylor the woman was gorgeous so beautiful elizabeth taylor and i loved the way she did her brows you know back then in that time it was real popular to have them really thick right in here and then a really high arch that was a lot thinner and so whenever i had started plucking my brows that way in the early 90s it was to try to mimic elizabeth taylor but the years of over plucking there's just and the hair doesn't really want to grow back that well there but i have noticed with this build a brow it's starting to grow back thicker so i think whatever's in that stuff that's supposed to make it grow it really does work so anyway from about right here to right there at the arch there's very, it's just a little strip of hair on the top and the rest of it is filled in with product. So <laughs> I was a little scared to do it at first when she suggested it because I thought it would look too harsh and too fake, but it actually 
it doesn't look too bad. I mean, you can obviously tell that it's drawn on brows, but it's not as bad as what I thought it would be. So I'm glad she talked me into it. And so many of you seem to like it. So yeah, I'll definitely do a video and show you guys how I do it. All right, let's see here where I left off. There is Lupe. Hello, how are you? Oh, well, thank you, Dina. I sure appreciate that. Oh, you did, Nessa. Okay, good. As soon as I get off of here, off of the live, I'll go check that email and then I'll put that code down in the bottom of that description box. There's Shelby. Hello, Shelby and Brenda. Nice to have you guys. Well, Shelby, I am glad that you are here too. Yes, I am. I usually try to announce it on Instagram and Facebook an hour or two before the live because I never really know from Friday to Friday what time I'm going to be able to get on. And I don't like to keep it at a set time only because several of you had commented that you were trying to catch it, but your lunch hours were all different. And so like right now, it's about 2.30 for me, but it's 11.30 on the West Coast. So I try to switch it up during those couple of hours there to try to give everybody a chance at least once to be able to catch it on a lunch break. So that's how come I can't say definitely like every Friday at noon for that reason. So Anyway, I do try to announce it a couple hours ahead of time over there on Instagram and Facebook. So if you guys aren't following me there yet, just look me up, Divine Design, and you'll find me there. Brenda is in Texas. Okay, well, hello from Texas. Hope your weather is as beautiful over there today as ours is here. I tell you, you guys had a rough go at it too. Miss Stationery and Stuff is here from the UK. Well, hello and nice to have you. Okay, Dina, thank you so much for joining us. Hope you have a great weekend. Miss Stationery and stuff. Yeah, I can I can totally attest to that. <laughs> and mine, they seem to want to grow in all kind of weird directions. So trying to keep them trimmed up can be challenging. They 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 seem more wiry. Does that make sense? Like they don't seem as manageable <laughs> as whenever I was young. So I guess the same way the hair up here changes, our hair on our face must change too. I don't know. Too funny. Yes, Ninju, I sure do. I use it on my... Oh, you tried it today, but it didn't work on your phone. Well, I'm so sorry. I don't know what kind of phone you have. I have an iPhone, and it works really easy from the iPhone. I just go in through the Creator Studio app and click the little live... The, there's a little video camera up at the top. And if I click the live there, it lets me put in the title and all that good stuff. And then we go live right from there. But it may depend on the Wi-Fi connection too, because I know there's been a couple of weeks whenever I've been on the live with you guys that there's been like some interference and stuff with the Wi-Fi and it didn't seem to record as well that way. So I don't know, maybe, maybe that was what was happening for you. But yeah, I always use my phone because I've tried it on the computer and I just can't figure it out. <laughs> so I'm having to take the easy way. Oh, mercy. Uh, did I get, oh, all the brow products? I got all of mine at Ulta. All of mine I got from Ulta. I think, I'm pretty sure It Cosmetics is exclusive to Ulta. I don't think you can get that one at Sephora, but the Anastasia, the Brow Wiz, I think you can. I think you can get that one at Sephora, but It Cosmetics, I'm pretty sure, is like exclusive to Ulta. I don't know that you want consider it like the Ulta brand, but maybe kind of. They only make it for Ulta, I think. I think that's the way that one goes. Uh, I don't know, Sheena. I know that it is helping mine come back because I've noticed a lot of hairs, they're not real thick yet, and it's not like whenever I don't have my makeup on, it just looks like I haven't plucked my brows if that makes sense. <laughs> but there's hair where there usually was no hair. So it is coming back in there. Now how it would work around a scar, I'm not real sure, but I'm going to think if it's helping mine grow back, it probably would help yours too. All right, let's see. There is Kitty. Hello there. She's here from Canada. Oh, well, thank you so very much for the that kind word. 
Oh, well, thank you so much. Okay, let's see. Uh, this right here, yes. That is a candle stand that I got at Hobby Lobby. I got it a couple of years ago now, so I'm not sure that they still sell that. And then that candle, I also got at Hobby Lobby during Christmas time. You can always find those beautiful blingy candles around Christmas. So both of those are probably, let's see about, I got those in 20... 15 I believe so two years old now is how old those are so not sure that you can still find it the lights one of the sets of lights and I don't even have them on right now but one of the sets of lights I picked up at Walmart that's the one uh, the all teal the larger ones well you can't see that side and I can't reach the other side but the larger ones that are all teal came from Walmart I want to say it was like $12 for that strand and then the smaller bulbs that have the darker teal it looks blue right there on camera but it's actually a darker teal with the white mixed in I got a five below for just five dollars so that's where all of those came from still waiting to get me a mirror cut to put here eventually want to get the glass put back in there but I love the little lights. I think they're so cute. You can get them in all kinds of colors now. They're they're just I love the pink ones. Walmart has some beautiful pink ones if you like pink too. All right, let's see here. Ingrid is here from Trinidad and Tobago. How are you? Wasn't it Trinidad and, and Tobago that just beat us in soccer the other night? <laughs> I think so, because you know the boys are all into soccer. If you watch the vlog video. I think that was the night they were all here because I remember Bub making a statement about, oh, the USA just lost. And I think it was Trinidad and Tobago knocked us out of the World Cup runnings for like the first time. And I want to say like since I don't remember how long, like over 10 years, I do believe. Yeah. So the boys were pretty, pretty sad that the USA lost, but that was apparently a pretty good game. <laughs> Rinda's World is here. Hello. We have another one from Oklahoma. Let's see what that says. M. Piper, M. Piper 83 from Oklahoma. That's like three of you now. Let's see. We got another one from Texas. Hey, Stacy, how are you? Ah, so you are sitting there waiting for your car to be serviced. Well, glad that we had perfect timing for that. Now you can hang out with us for a little while. Rinda's World is in New Hampshire. All righty, all right. We have some good friends that live up there in Portsmouth. Yes, we've only been there once to visit them, but it was such a beautiful area. Love it up there. Uh, okay, wait a minute, Ninju, let me think about that, because I actually have two different YouTube apps on my phone, um, and I can't look at it right now because I'm using it. Let me think. I, I think it is the Creator Studio. No, 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 it's not. It's the regular YouTube app, I think. It's the one where you can go on to, like, watch people's videos, not the one where you go on to comment to everybody. I think that one's the creator one, so it must be the regular one. Yeah, and if you'll look right up there on the top little right-hand corner, there's, like, an icon for a video camera, and if you click on that, that's where you can go live. If you have an iPhone, now how it works on Android or, or any other phone, I'm not real sure, but that's how it works for me. All right, let's see here. Okay, Jan, have a great weekend, and hello up there in New York. I love New York. Can't wait to go back. Love, love, love that city. There is Prime Sparrow. How are you, Kathy? You doing well? I know that you're having a little bit of a go at it with everything happening with your mom, so I hope you're having a pretty good day under all the circumstances. Yes, Trinidad and Tobago is the one who did beat us. I thought so. <laughs> oh, your husband grew up in Portsmouth. Well, that is too cool. I'm trying to remember. Let's see. We were there in 2007. That shows you how long ago it was. Ten years ago since we visited up there. But such a pretty area. It really is. However, I do have to say, I don't know that I could live there because when my friends post their pictures on Facebook during the winter... <laughs> all that snow oh no and then there were several days she was she was telling me that whenever it gets cold and snowy like that that they can go several days with like no sun at all I mean like it's daylight out it's not rainy it's just 
kind of dreary and lots of clouds that block that direct sun and being a Floridian in the sun all my life I don't know that I could handle that I think that would probably cause me to go into depression I really do because even dreary days here it's like oh I just want to see the sun so <laughs> but it was beautiful in the spring when we were there maybe if I could do like like our neighbors across the street here they only come here during the winter and then they live in Ohio during the summer and the spring so maybe if I could do that like go up there during the summer and spring and then come back in the winter maybe that would be a good solution yeah, because you guys are just a little bit cooler than us. <laughs> Definitely not as humid. Oh, so that would be nice. China get glazed nail polish up at 30% off. That's a good deal over there on Holler. You know what? I was looking on Holler the other day because it's been a while since I'd ordered anything and I could not find anything that I really wanted or that I needed. So I just clicked off of there and haven't ordered from Holler in a while. But hopefully with the holidays coming, they're going to have some fun new stuff on there. That'll be worth it. Let's see what Kathy said. Uh-oh. <laughs> Was there a little clash there, Kathy? <laughs> oh. Is it too early to start decorating for Christmas? I hope not because I'm about to start pulling some of mine out. <laughs> I got a couple of holiday themed videos that I want to get out for you guys and I want to get them out right around Thanksgiving before Black Friday, of course, because you need some of this information before Black Friday and I need decoration in the background. <laughs> so I don't think I'm going to pull the big tree out or even the dining room tree out yet, but I'll probably go ahead and do the one in my room and the office and and get the little spots done for video purposes but girl I would leave it up all year long if I could if I had enough room in my house matter of fact I used to say when I was younger if I could afford to build a big enough house to where you could live in half of it part of the year and the other half part of the year I would just leave Christmas up all the time <laughs> and then you could just go in that part of the house and enjoy a little Christmas all year long if you wanted to that would be that I love Christmas and I love all all the decorations. I just really, really do. All right, there is Billy Payne. Hello, how are you? What is wrong with snow? Well, nothing's wrong with snow except for the fact when you're from Florida, it's just not particularly something <laughs> that you want to deal with all the time. Matter of fact, I know plenty of people who live in snow that don't want to have to deal with it either. So there you go. That's the answer to that. creatively miss me with Stephanie doesn't like snow either <laughs> my husband used to live in Michigan and he 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 would not want to go back maybe for a visit I'd love to go see it because I still have yet to see real snow I've told you guys that before I've never even seen real snow like a good snow so I'd like to see it but I, I wouldn't want to live in it I have to be honest I wouldn't <laughs> all right let's see here Okay, so you get a lot of snow in the in the winter time there in North Carolina. Uh, we had some good friends that lived in North Carolina that we tried to go visit one year to see snow. <laughs> the one week out of the summer that it didn't snow was the week we were there. Can you believe it? <laughs> so we still didn't get a chance to see the snow. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I know. Those trolls like to show up once in a while, don't they, you guys? <laughs> uh, all right let's see what is that next name i forgot to bring my glasses in here i think that says navil is that what that says thank you for joining us all right stacy glad you got your car done and thanks for joining us have a great weekend lily she wished that she had a wrench <laughs> Can I please squeeze in a Christmas themed makeup tutorial? That would be fun. Yeah, I think I will try. That will be a lot of fun. I did do several last year, not really necessarily a makeup tutorial, just playing around with some of the makeup sets that had come out last Christmas, but this one would be fun to do something with glitter. Mm-hmm. 
because we have to have glitter at the Christmas parties, girls. <laughs> Always wear glitter at the Christmas parties on them lash, on the lids, and on my lips. Yes, I do. Glitter overload for Christmas and New Year's, of course, and Valentine's Day, and well, practically every holiday. Let's just be honest. <laughs> Any excuse to wear glitter. Oh, okay, I see. So they were like a little territorial fighting going on, huh, Kathy? I've heard that male cats do that. I, I've never had a cat, so I'm not really sure, but I have heard that they will do that. Which I guess makes sense because they are felines and lions and tigers and lemurs and all that. Not lemurs. Um, what's the word? Pumas. What? What am I thinking about? Puma, pumas. They all do that out in the wild. So I'm going to guess, yeah, that's probably pretty natural for them to do. Oh, well, thank you so very much there, Kitty. I appreciate those kind words. Yes, it is never too early to start Christmas. <laughs> never too early, in my opinion. I love it, love it. Nessa, you're going to try to hold off till November the 1st, but you don't know if you can. I, I understand you, girlfriend. <laughs> Let's see, what is today? Today's the 13th, oh, Friday the 13th. Um, that would be two more weeks, about 17 days, 18 days you'd have to wait. Yeah, that's that's a long wait when you're... The, Bub's already been playing the Christmas music. Every time we get in the car together to go somewhere, he's got his Christmas music going, and he even plays it here sometimes when we're not you know, involved with something else and we just got the music going. He's got the Christmas tunes a flowing, so it's been getting us in the Christmas spirit around here. <laughs> okay, so you guys never get snow in Houston. We never get snow here either. That well, I take that back. We did get snow in nineteen eighty nine and actually two Januaries ago we had one day where there was little light snow flurries. I mean it was snow, but not like snow people really get. Every single state in the country, even in Hawaii, they had gotten snow. Can you believe it? So we did get a little bit that day. It was extremely cold. In 1989, I can remember, pretty good snow came down, but it was a blanket of white in the morning when we first got up, but by like about 10, 11 o'clock, it had already melted all away. So it was real pretty right at first, but didn't last very long. And then one other time that I can remember... Must have been around 78 because we were still, that my dad was in Bible school at the time. We were living down in Lakeland, so it had to be between 77 and 79, somewhere in there. And it snowed one morning, and again, by about 10 o'clock, all the snow was gone. But we did get to go outside and play in it for a little bit. Tried to form, tried to form a snowman, but like our snow was a wet snow. It didn't really, you know, compress on itself. So it doesn't get to make a snowman. But we did have to dry our mittens in the oven. <laughs> I do remember that. That's the only times here that I can remember it getting cold enough in Florida to have a little bit of snow. I do, Renda. I need to come play in that snow. I want to I want to make a snow angel. Like that's seriously legit on my on my bucket list. We make sand angels all the time at the beach, but I've never made a snow angel and I want to. <laughs> I have always wanted to have a white Christmas. Yes, I have. And I've never had one. But I really do. We have talked several years now about renting a cabin at Christmas time and going up and being in a cabin hoping for a white Christmas and all that. But of course, we have so much family. The kids were smaller, of course at that time and we didn't want to take the kids away from grandparents and all that during the holidays because you just want to be with family but now that they're older and and they've outgrown the little kid stages we've been talking about it again because i think that would be awesome to go somewhere and have an actual white christmas instead of wearing shorts and flip-flops <laughs> 
It used to be whenever I was a little bit younger, we had pretty cold Christmases here. And there were even times when the kids were really little, we had to bundle them up like two jackets, the long pants, long sleeve shirts, because it would be so cold to get out there and play with their little, like the big wheels, the little motorized cars that they would get for Christmas and stuff like that. It was so cold. But the last couple of years here, we legitimately have been in shorts and flip-flops because it's been a little warmer. <laughs> but I heard yesterday that El Nina is coming and she's supposed to be bringing some drier, colder weather this year. So that's going to be nice to have it a little colder again. <laughs> because even though I love Florida and I love the heat and all that, I really do like a cold colder winter. Our, our colds here would get down. I think the coldest that we usually get is about 18. And that's only... That's only a couple nights out of the summer, but we do hit like 30 to 32 quite a few days during the winter because we're in North Florida. So we're North enough that it still does get freezing here. Have to cover all the plants outside and all that good stuff. But that only happened maybe twice this past year. It was a little warmer than usual and I missed it. I do like that cold in the winter time. Let's see here where I left off. Is Bub and Kristen dressing up for Halloween? No, we don't actually celebrate Halloween, Sheena. That's one ha uh, holiday that we don't celebrate, but we do have an alternative little festival thing at our church trying to keep kids off of the streets for Halloween. And so we will be down there. Um, for any of you guys that have missed those vlogs, I do have an old one from two two years ago now on this channel. You can type in Vlogtober Day 31 and that should bring that video up for you. And then last year, actually last year's would be on this channel too. I guess both of them would be on this channel because it was before we made the vlog channel. So both of those should be on there. If you kind of want to see, I showed you guys around the festival. We don't dress up or any of that kind of stuff, but we have little activities for all the kids to come and do get free candy, giveaways, and all that good stuff. Give away cotton candy and hot dogs and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's a real fun night that we go and do. So we don't, we don't celebrate Halloween and we don't dress up for Halloween, but we do offer the fun festival at our church for Halloween, if that kind of makes sense. So yeah, you guys can go in there and search Vlogtober Day 31 and take a look at those old vlogs and then you'll be able to see I showed you guys around the festival and how how we did it so that's our plan again this year unless bub has a soccer game if he has a soccer game of course we won't be able to make it but kind of contingent on that right now well kathy i know i understand but you know what she she knows and she understands and sometimes unfortunately we have to make those kind of tough decisions that's best for the ones we love even though it's hard to do. So your mom completely understands and you have been a great, great support to her and even going to see her now as much as you can. She knows how much you love her and she completely understands that it's beyond you being able to take care of her by herself. So don't feel guilty. Do not let yourself feel guilty and just know that as sad as it is to watch our loved ones get older and to see their health change, it's hard and it's sad, but she understands. She really, really does. So don't feel guilty about that. Let's see what Nessa says here. Ah, it's predicted to be about 40 even in Tampa. Well, good, because if you guys are going to be at 40, we're going to be even lower than that. So <laughs> that makes me happy. <laughs> oh, not sure why the ugly comment there about Texas. That That's not very nice. Malia is here from Hawaii. Hello, Malia. How are you? Still have not made it to Hawaii. <laughs> but one of these days, I hope to. <laughs> Can you guys tell? I just want to travel the whole world. I just want to go everywhere. Lunell is here from South Africa. Hello, hello. Do you know White Christmas is one of my all-time favorite Christmas songs? And there's a couple different people that do really great renditions of that song. But one of my favorites is a group called For Him. Actually, I don't even know that they're still together anymore. It's the, the number four and then the word him, H-I-M. 
they have a beautiful rendition of that song. It came out in the early 90s. It's an old song now. Maybe you could find it on YouTube. I don't know if you wanted to hear their rendition, but I do. I like it. And then, of course, I love the classic White Christmas, and we have the movie here. So every year, we have to watch that movie. <laughs> It is a tradition here in our house. Yes, one of my all-time favorite songs. And it's always just been a dream of mine, too. So, don't know if it'll ever come reality, but I would like for it to. They have better quality Coke in Texas. Let's see here, Kathy. What did you say? No, I know. It's definitely going to change. That's the way we felt a couple, couple of Christmases ago, right after we first lost my grandma. Most of you will remember that. We lost her in 2015, and that Christmas was extremely tough because every Christmas that I have had, <clears throat> my grandma was a big part of it. And we would always go to her house on Christmas Eve. That was just the big tradition. All the cousins, we'd all would come to my grandma's house. And even after we got older and got married and had families of our own, as many of us that could would make it to Mima's house on Christmas Eve. And that's just been my life, you know? And so that first year that she was gone, it was so, so strange to not have her, to not have her, even, even whenever she got where she couldn't, she was living on her own, but very close to my mom, like literally right around the corner. So she wasn't completely on her own anymore. And she would be with us at mom's house. And so it was just so strange that first Christmas that she wasn't there. So I can totally, totally relate to that, Kathy. I absolutely can. It's it's strange when you start getting older. I guess when we're younger, you know that there is a circle of life and you know that life does come to an end and it's not that you delude yourself into believing it's never going to happen. It's just when you're so young and you have so much life ahead of you, it's hard to imagine being in the time when it starts happening. You know what I mean? And so it's like now that here I am, pushing really close to 50, things change. You know, your your extended family starts getting older and things start happening and the natural cycles of life start happening. And it's it feels strange. It really does. Because inside, you know, there are days I still feel like such a child. I still feel so young and I feel like I'm in my 20s, you know? And so it's hard for me to realize that, well, wait a minute, you know, if I'm getting close to 50, then that means that grandparents are a lot older, aunts and uncles are a lot older, and the reality is that the time span for them is not a whole lot longer. And yeah, that's strange. It really, really is strange coming to grips with all that. So I can totally relate to you there, Kathy. I know how you're feeling on all that. Crafty Grammy is here. Hello. She's in South Texas, so no snow for you either. Yeah, <laughs> I was just saying to here, flip-flops. Yeah, I wear flip-flops. Even whenever it's cold outside, though, I'll put on the little, the little socks that have the funky toes <laughs> to decorate up my flip-flops. I love my flip-flops. Yes, I do. All right, let's see here. Is that, I'm not sure if you say, my? I don't have my glasses on. Is that Kaka Dreamer? Not real sure. But anyway, yeah, I like cities too. I have to tell you, I like our small town. It serves its purpose. I, you know, I like the best of both worlds, but I would like to be in a city. I really would because I love city life. I like the busyness. I like the people. I like being around life all the time, you know? Denver has a lot of Texas transplants. Have they all moved up to Denver? Hmm. Nessa will be 40. This year, Nessa, is this your 40th birthday? Tips on potty training a stubborn three-year-old boy. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what I had learned, uh, Sheena, and what we did with our kids is to wait until they're ready. 
because so many parents start potty training their kids too early and really all they're doing is training themselves to remember every two or three hours to ask their child, do you have to go to the bathroom? You're training yourself, not the kid. Whenever a child's muscles develop enough that they know they're fixing to go to the bathroom, that's when you're ready to train them. And that can be different ages for different children. I know children that that really isn't fully functional until around three. But when we were ready, whenever our kids started knowing, okay, they were to go to the bathroom, they're asking to go to the bathroom, and we started that process, we would give rewards for every time that they made it to the bathroom. Sometimes I would put little Skittles in a airtight container so that they could see it in the bathroom, but yet it was protected from the air in the bathroom, and they would get two Skittles, just two. <laughs> but to a kid, that's a lot. They would get two Skittles when they went to the bathroom. Or sometimes we would give them stickers or different things like that. Maybe new Play-Doh. We would offer them some rewards. And I know a lot of parents are against that because they feel like it's bribing the kids to do what's right. But that's not true. It's just like when you are training a pet. You give positive reinforcements for positive behaviors. And that helps them put two and two together. The connection that... Okay, this is a positive thing I'm doing. So it's not, it works wonderfully well. It works wonderfully well in a lot of different areas of life. I mean, come on. If you're, if you're an adult and you're employed and your employer gives you a raise because you've done a good job, isn't that the same idea? Yeah. <laughs> when you do a good job at work and you're a hard worker and you get projects done on time and all that kind of stuff, you're going to be rewarded with better pay, maybe more benefits, maybe more hours, or maybe more responsibility. You're going to be rewarded. And it's the same way with our children. We reward them for good behavior. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So reward is a good thing and it really does work. Trust me. I worked in a daycare when Steve and I first got married. I worked there for almost a year and I had the age group <clears throat> where we were starting to help potty train. Like the parents were potty training at home and so there were some in our class that we would work with them during the day for their parents and we did the same thing. We set up little rewards like that. Sometimes it was candy, sometimes it was toys, just different things. And whenever we would have 15 to 20 kids in a room and we were successful with the reward program, I knew when I got older and had my kids, it was something that could work in my own home. So just an idea just an idea <laughs> but yeah i know a lot of parents get funny about that and they don't they they think they're bribing their kids or whatever and i'm like oh pff, no really because don't you like to be rewarded whenever you do something good so you know that's just my thoughts on that <laughs> okay i'm trying to see how we can try to, to block some of these for you guys. Random Reviews is here. Nice to have you. Okay. I'm trying, you guys. I'm trying. <laughs> oh. All right, let's see where we are here. Yep, sticker charts work really well. Um, I have a, a sister-in-law who did a, a sticker chart. <clears throat> oh, yes, I will. She did. Nana's Design Studio. I don't know if I am aware of that channel. But yes, I certainly will, Arlene. That is very sad. Definitely offering our condolences there. Good advice, Malia. Yep, Nessa's going to be 40 this year. <laughs> Juanita is here. Hello, Juanita. How are you? Yes, that is true, Kathy. Absolutely. I believe that too. And that's, you know, that's really what got me through a lot of the grief with my grandma because I know she loved the Lord with all of her heart and she served him all her life. And so I know that it's not goodbye forever. It's just temporal. You know what I mean? And although it can feel like forever here, 
once we're reunited on the other side of glory, it, it, we won't even have noticed the time. So that is definitely one of the things that helped me through with my grief was the hope that I would definitely see her again. So hold on to that hope, my friend. Hold on to it. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, consistency is key, but just make sure in doing that, Malia, because that's still training yourself. You know, you're still setting the timer to remind yourself because when a child is really, really ready to go potty and they can feel that, the little muscles down there, they'll start hiding behind chairs, they'll go off to their room or they'll come tell you, change my diaper. That's when you really know they're ready. Otherwise, you're going to be setting timers and you're going to be running back and forth to that bathroom and remembering to ask the child whenever, yeah, he may go and you may be lucky enough to catch a little bit of urine in that little potty, but it, it just so happens that it just was coincidentally the right time. You know what I mean? It's still, they're not connecting that feeling of having to go to the bathroom with actually going. So, so just be careful with that because I know I'm working in childcare. That's one of the things that can frustrate parents very quickly is because they're constantly reminding the kids, but then they take the kid and they go sit them on the potty. They don't go. And then they get up and 10 minutes later, they've wet themselves and the parents are frustrated. Like, I just had you on the toilet. Why didn't you go? They're not ready. <laughs> they're not ready. And they can't because they don't feel that yet. They can't control it yet. So just be careful with it. Just be careful there. <laughs> All right, let's see here. National Pug Day? When was that? Because my daughter loves pugs. Hmm. Something's supposed to happen on the 15th? That would be, what, Sunday? I don't know. I haven't heard of anything happening on the 15th. Let's see what Kathy said. Um, I don't know, Kathy. I haven't heard. I saw I saw uh, Sheena's comment before yours, and then I went back up and read yours. I haven't heard anything about October 15th, so I don't know. You guys enlighten me if you know something that's supposed to happen. The stock market will fall, and others are saying it's the end of the world on October the 15th. Hmm. I have not heard that. <laughs> I have not heard that. But now that you tell me and your question is, what would I think of that? I don't think it's the end of the world yet. I just, I don't. You know, even for those of us that may believe in some Bible prophecy and things that are going to happen towards the end, there's still some other things that, that need to happen before that's going to take place. So no, I don't think October the 15th is the end of the world. But if it did happen to be the end of the world, that's that's two days from now, it'd be like, okay, all my troubles would be over. No more mold to deal with. No more sinus headaches to deal with. No more financial strain to deal with, you know? I mean, worse things could happen, right? So that's just the way I try to look at it because people try to predict all the time the end of the world, you know, and, and so many kooky people come out of the woodwork to try to talk about doomsday and they try to put dates on it and it causes a lot of fear in people. And it, my thought is when it happens, it's just going to happen and I'm not going to worry about it because there's nothing I can do to stop it anyway. So I'm just going to have fun while, while, while I'm waiting. <laughs> Let's see what else we got here. <clears throat> Yeah, that's right. Okay, bye, Nessa. <laughs> See you later, girlfriend. Have a great weekend. All right, Lily, let's see what you're saying here. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. That's the only that's the only thing that really gives you peace during grief because I tell you what, grief is one of those things that it's like you know, it it is so hard to walk through and there are days where you really really feel like your guts are being ripped out. You know what I mean? And it's just so 
heart-wrenching to lose someone that you love. And you have to have hope. You have to have a hope that you can hold on to to make those dark days even just a little bit brighter because it's just a natural part of the grieving process that you have to walk through. You can't stuff it away. You can't hide it away. You can't ignore it. It's going to happen. But you have to be able to have something positive to give you hope to make it through. Absolutely you do. <clears throat> let's see well thank you very much let's see that's Janie nice to have you with us today Janie yeah Kathy I agree with you on that that is for sure <laughs> well Toby do you know what they're all kinds of grown-ups have all kind of imaginary friends and they love their superheroes and their imaginations and they love their video games and all kind of stuff you know what I'm saying and so people are gonna have imaginary friends and things they believe in and for me imaginary to you or not he's very real so yeah I definitely believe in God and will continue to believe in God people say God's a crutch but you know what people have all kinds of crutches in lives whether it's alcohol drugs sex entertainment uh getting stuck inside their their own little world anything that they have to escape life or whatever people have crutches that help them in this life because life is hard it is really hard so if people want to tell me that my relationship with god is a crutch hey i'll take it because i do need a crutch life is hard it is hard to deal with i can never deal with it on my own <laughs> And I need a crutch. And for me, my crutch is going to be God. So it doesn't offend me when people say that. It really doesn't because I know that I cannot navigate life on my own. I do need someone to lean on. And for me, that's God. My faith in God gets me through a lot of things. So that's not offensive. <laughs> not offensive at all. And I know that people think he's imaginary or whatever, but he's not. He's very real. And if you read the Torah, then you have a very real understanding of who Jehovah is, Yahweh. Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, Arlene, I sure hate to hear that. I'm not familiar with who that is, or I don't think so anyway. Um, I'll have to go back and check on my list. I have been so busy, you guys. My schedule has been so swamped here lately. I haven't had a lot of time on YouTube, and some of the channels that I was watching... I can't even remember some of them right now. And I know that sounds awful. It's just, you guys know, we have been working. I took a little break from YouTube and just, life's just been crazy. I almost can't even remember where I'm going most days. <laughs> My daughter told me yesterday, she said, Mom, I'm getting a little scared to even be in the car with you. So life's just kind of, kind of been crazy. All right, let's see. We're going to get rid of that one because that's just, you know, I don't I don't understand why people come on here and get ugly and be mean, but that's just part of the internet, I suppose. <laughs> just part of the internet. <laughs> oh my word. It takes all kinds. Yes, it does. It takes all kinds, but God love them. That's for sure. But anyway, I'm about to jump off of here, you guys. It's been almost an hour, and I got a few more things around here to do. I'm going to be gearing up for a little giveaway, so you guys be keeping your eyes on the channel over the next couple days. Not sure exactly when I'll get that posted, but be watching because we got a few things here that we will give away. Oh, that's good, Sheena. Yay! Always good when the kids get good report cards. That is for sure. All right, Kathy. Have a great weekend and give your mom a hug for all of us. Yeah. All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to hop off of here, get some things done. Be watching over on the vlog channel tonight because we should have another vlog up and running for you tonight. And we'll just let you take a sneak peek. Nothing super exciting, just a lot of busy work around here. But nonetheless, we'll share it with you. <laughs> some of you like to spend a few minutes with us and we appreciate it because we love spending time with you guys as well. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and say adios. Hope you all have a great weekend and I'll see you 
again soon in an upcoming video. Much love to you.